Hello, and welcome to uh, webinar 16 for Donaldson Clean Fuel and Lubricant Solutions. Uh, the topic today is your fuel system uh, on your engine. It is the most sensitive and expensive component on your engine, and we're going to learn how to protect it. The objectives for today are to briefly cover the modern high pressure common rail uh, diesel fuel system on your engine and briefly describe fuel particulate contamination and the damage it does in a fuel system. Additionally, we'd like to describe best practices in protecting your fuel system, both uh, uh, topics uh, in bulk situations and additionally on engine. So first we'd like to kind of review the high pressure common rail schematic. Starting in the bottom right hand corner, you have the on engine fuel tank. And then typically there's usually two filters. The first filter uh, is usually identified as a primary filter. Uh, almost always that's a, a water barrier or water separation. Sometimes there's a, a twist and drain or a clear bowl at the, at the bottom of the housing <clears throat> meant to accumulate water or gross water. And then the secondary filter typically on these engines is the where the, the majority or bulk of the particle filtration happens. And so uh, for newer engines, those built after 2010 to 2013, um, that have 20,000 PSI injection pressures and, and above, uh, typically that is in the area of uh, three, four micron high efficiency particle filtration. Then it goes to the high pressure lift pump and then to the high pressure common rail. So the, the idea here is that the fuel is getting uh, elevated pressures so you can have a uh, very, um, precise amounts of fuel being injected at, at, at specific intervals. So typically uh, every stroke you have between five and eight injections and the fuel is getting completely atomized and uh, a complete combustion burn is happening. Um, at that uh, high pressure common rail, we're, we're like we said, 20,000 PSI and, and um, over 140 uh, Fahrenheit. So the, the fuel is actually getting oxidized, just like, you know, you, you, uh, your oil turn goes from clear brown to dark black in, in a matter of weeks. Um, this is what's happening on your engine. Then there, the fuel gets cooled down, and then most engines have a one to two gallon per minute return rate. And so uh, a lot of people are calling us complaining about their, their either their primary or their secondary fuel filter turning black. The, the appropriate term for that is called carbonaceous deposit. And it's very normal for, for any engine that has high pressure common rail and uh, a, a high return rate uh, going back to the, uh, the engine. So uh, there is one, one note of that is if there's like a slime present on that filter, uh, you have a chemistry problem. Uh, and, and if you were to go to an engine that wasn't experiencing issues, uh, the filter, the, the same engine, would the filters would be black as well. Now we'd like to get go into a little bit more detail about the high pressure common rail or injector itself in the system that is the that and the high pressure pump are the most sensitive components uh, in the fuel system. The uh, spray coming out the bottom of the injector tip is what people are most familiar with, but that is not where most of the wear occurs in these modern high pressure common rail injectors. There's a control valve in the top head of the injector that controls how much fuel goes into the engine versus how much goes as return flow back to the tank that Paul had mentioned. That whole portion of that system is under pressure from say 20 to 23,000 PSI, maybe as high as 45,000 PSI in some of the newest systems. And it is passing through a two to three micron open valve, a tolerance of uh, two to three microns in open condition, and then it closes. And if there are particles of two to three microns in size that can get into that space when that valve closed, they will do damage to the surface of the valve and I'll begin to allow, if that damage accumulates much, begin to allow uh, a leakage across that valve surface that is uh, damaging and it erodes that surface very quickly. Uh, noted here in about 20 hours, if you had a concentration of five ppm of dirt in the fuel, which is on the high end of average fuel contamination, uh, in about 20 hours, you could start doing damage to those injectors if you do not remove all those particles. So what we're, we're showing here is basically what, what happens to um, injectors without any filtration at all. 
um, but the, the specification for fuel D975 is actually allows several times more debris than, than what we're showing here. So uh, we can destroy injectors in 20 minutes. Uh, these systems are not the same systems that they were running in the 80s with unit injection. They're incredibly more sensitive. Uh, there's several topics we brushed on there and we'll cover here in a, in a moment that are covered in more detail on My Clean Diesel and the, in the rest of these videos. If you're watching this from our YouTube channel, you may already see the other, the other ones on fuel specifications and descriptions of debris over time and fuel and fuel chemistry issues, that kind of thing. Just a really good resource to cover some of these, more, these areas in detail if you're more interested. So basically, the, the reason we wanted to highlight this is that uh, we found some publicized data that said that uh, overall the um, fuel system failure on, on new engines is resulting in about a $3 billion um, parts market for, for North America and about $10 billion globally. Um, we, we believe that there's some pretty simple changes that you can do to your uh, equipment to, uh, to reduce fuel quality issues and, and um, increase equipment uptime. So just to kind of highlight, um, like Jim was saying, we have videos on all these topics, but um, fuel quality issues typically uh, identify themselves as one, uh, premature fuel filter plugging. Almost always you'd see that on the secondary, the, the tight particle filter on, on these new engines. And you can't go to a more open filter like you like your grandpa used to be able to because otherwise um, you, you're, you're going to score those injectors like we just learned about. Two, um, almost always you might see a, a reduction in horsepower, um, incomplete combustion resulting in, in, in um, DPF failure um, and, and re increased regens. And then lastly, after, after a course of those times of fuel quality issues without uh, improving the fuel quality or, or maybe going to a more open filter, you're going to start to see injector failure. And so injector failure, premature fuel filter plugging, and, and exhaust issues are all signs that you have fuel quality. And, and then kind of as this translates into return on investment, um, you know, the average set of injectors replacement is going anywhere from Ten to fifteen thousand dollars. So, we believe if you can uh, take some of those um, replacement costs and, and invest it in upfront in controlling your fuel quality and your fuel supply, uh, you're going to be able to effectively prevent failure on, on your entire fleet. Uh, just a, a couple of brief descriptions and depictions of uh, debris and diesel fuel here. Uh, this is a 100x magnification image of, of debris and diesel fuel. You can see there's a lot of small particles in there. Uh, there rarely are there particles even large enough to see. If you can see particles in diesel fuel, it's far dirtier than is allowed to be uh, going into an engine to, to expect routine operation. You're going to have problems. Uh, that is That picture is hard particulate. There's also uh, it was mentioned soft contamination earlier. This happens to be glycerin dropping out of biodiesel. It's a soft, sticky contaminant that can coat filters over and plug things very quickly. Um, that, those are the two main sort of families of debris you'll see in fuel. Uh, to give you an idea, in comparison to the picture on the, the upper left uh, and the concentration of debris there, that's not an uncommon concentration of debris in fuel, and you need to get down to uh, almost nothing present in the fuel to protect your new your new uh, injection systems. So the bottom is just a, a demonstration of, of roughly how many times you need to clean up fuel. And to give a better description of that or a better uh, we have a another uh, depiction of a thousand particles in uh, in in diesel fuel. This is what typical distribution of particle sizes look like. And re recall that two to three micron particles are what are of the most concern. You need to remove everything larger than two microns, which of this thousand particles, that's almost all of them. So if this is the typical dirt in fuel and you go through a, a common 10 to 25 or 30 micron nominal diesel fuel filter, you're perhaps removing some of the largest particles and you're really not very good at removing anything below 
10 to 15 microns in size. The efficiency at removing those particles for those filters is really not, uh, not significant. It, it isn't removing anything. And for your older series engines, that's actually okay. For an older series engine, they maybe have a 7 to 10 micron filter uh, that isn't particularly good at even removing 7 to 10 micron particles. And this is an, an idea of what is actually needed to be removed to protect an older series unit injector engine. You didn't really need to remove that much particulate. For a, uh, for a modern engine where you can't back off on filtration, as we've noted, uh, you need to remove almost all that material. So only the particles down below 2 micron can, can even pass at some level through the filter and not expect to do damage in the injection system. So you really need to do a, a high level of efficiency there. And that work needs to get done either on the, on the, the bulk end of things or in the on equipment uh, filter. And the on equipment filter is going to see all of that work. So if it's a, a really high duty cycle system, it's going to need to remove this uh, uh, amount of particulate on an ongoing basis over time. So what you're looking at here is our, our Donaldson Blue, and we're going to highlight this in a couple more slides, but if it's Donaldson Blue, it's the best product we offer in that category. This is the DBF, Donaldson Blue Fuel, on-engine fuel filter. Um, what we're going to see in a couple slides is the Donaldson Blue Bulk uh, filters, and they're rated for beta 2000 at 4 micron. So the way you read that is, of those 1,000 particles, the, the beta 2000 filters are going to re remove 99.995% of those 1,000 particles and really hitting, like Jim said, all of those uh, particles that, that do damage to the high pressure common rail circuit. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, the uh, third objective is to sort of go over how to change your fuel management and filtration practices to ensure those on-engine uh, uh, filters and the injection system is protected as best it can. We have a, a mantra here doing uh, this type of work for large customers of clean the fuel, protect it in storage, and polish it as it goes on into the, the uh, piece of equipment that it's going to be operating. Uh, the, these are all good steps to take, but the most critical step is the polish step. You need to ensure that you're doing some significant level of that particle removal before it goes into the on-vehicle tank Otherwise, you're leaving all of that job for that on-engine filter, who's obviously who's the job of that filter has gotten dramatically larger since it re needs to remove just about everything. Uh, another good idea is protecting your fuel from outside contamination on site, dust and, and moisture. Uh, do that with a breather on the fuel tank is a good idea. Um, but the most thorough and complete way to deal with this, if possible, is to when you take possession of your fuel, filter it at the level you need to protect your engines at that point. So here's a manifold of filters that can filter tanker truck offload rates into your already clean and protected storage tank. If you clean out your tank, install filtration at the inlet and keep a breather on it, there's far less chance of particulate forming and accumulating in that tank that will go on to get dispensed into your equipment. So we talked about return on investment before, and earlier it was a cost, uh, a replacement cost of a set of injectors is between ten and fifteen thousand dollars per per truck. Uh, what what isn't really tangible is the your fuel costs, and so you know for the average user, uh, fuel costs represent about forty percent of their 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 operating budget. Um, a tanker truck driving down the road, seventy five hundred gallons, uh, is about Twenty twenty-five thousand dollars, and and being able to apply appropriate filtration is allowing you to control the investment that you're the, that forty percent of your operating costs, uh, making sure that you're getting um, spec product and it's not going to cause you any downtime. Uh, just to uh, touch one more time, the the cleaning on the inlet, you're making sure the fuel is as clean as it needs to be for your equipment when you take possession of it. Once that fuel is in your storage tank, if there's a solids formation issue, uh, it, the fuel supplier is going to leave that problem to you. If you catch it there before they put it in your fuel tank by filtering there, uh, you can protect your investment of whatever fuel you still have in that tank and prevent from making a larger mess by putting two loads of fuel, one not very good, into another and making a mess. 
So to sort of reiterate the uh, upgrades in the bolt filtration end of things, uh, do the filtration work before the fuel is put into your equipment. Uh, and that is the by far the best way to ensure you're going to get to normal change out intervals uh, without undue restriction on your on equipment filters. Uh, to clean the fuel when you take possession of it, if, if possible, uh, at a level that is similar or equivalent to what is needed for the equipment, then you know that you haven't taken possession of a problem. You've protected your investment in your fuel and the fuel that you already have uh, in your system. Uh, and lastly, to do the majority of the filtration prior to the on engine filter helps you meet service intervals. You don't want any more unexpected downtime than possible. And uh, it just it gives you time to react uh, if there is a situation with your fuel not being on spec and you're starting to plug the bulk filters, at least you're not plugging on equipment filters. So what you're looking at now is a little cut sheet from our sales literature on the DBF 5782, the on-engine Donaldson Blue fuel filters. And what we're depicting is um, our efficiency specifically in that of the the four micron number um, relative to our competitors so one of the reasons we do uh, or we we recommend bulk tank filtration is because it's the best place to filter because the environment is is the best case scenario when you're filling up your equipment you have one start stop very little vibration and you put you know 100 gallons of fuel into your saddlebags typically on, ish, on engine is a is a different story. You have start, stop, and vibration, and your equipment's moving. So that's just a negative. All those factors negatively impact the the particle retention of of, of fuel filters. Uh, we have some uh, technology in our filters that um, minimize that uh, that particles going downstream, and we've been able to um, definitely um, impact positively impact the fuel cleanliness on engine. Due to that technology and so what you're basically seeing is that uh, four times cleaner um, you know hundreds of thousands of particles difference uh, between our our filters and our competitors on, on downstream cleanliness so giving you the best quality fuel for your injectors well we appreciate your time again uh, you'll find this video and, and 15 others uh, like it that, that kind of identify um, chemistry, water, cold weather operability, and diesel all can be found on MyCleanDiesel.com or on our YouTube channel. If you go to MyCleanDiesel, there's an ability to connect with us. You can put in your email address and we'll, we'll automatically invite you to all the upcoming WebExes. So thanks for your time and, and uh, let us know if you have any questions by uh, shooting us an email.